In this video, we'll be discussing a type of electromagnetic induction that I call flux changes in the loop, along with Faraday's law. This video is part of a series or playlist of videos on induction. In our introductory video, I explained how I've broken this topic up into three different types of induction to help you organize your understanding. And this video discusses the second type. A prerequisite for following this video is the concept of magnetic flux. So if you're unsure what that's about, you should first check out our discussion of magnetic flux. Let's take a look at this simulation involving a bar magnet and a loop of wire containing a filament lamp. Moving the magnet into and away from the coil results in a current flowing and the lamp lighting up, as you just saw. What factors affect the size of the current that flows and how brightly the lamp glows? If we use a stronger magnet, so that the magnitude of the magnetic flux density around the magnet increases, the current increases, and the lamp glows brighter than before. What if we increase the number of turns of wire in the loop, thereby turning it into a coil? Once again, the current increases and the lamp glows brighter still than before. How about increasing the area of the loop? Once again, the current increases and the lamp glowed brighter than previously. What if we move the magnet faster towards the coil? You guessed it, the current increases and the lamp glows even brighter. Finally, you'll have probably already noticed that no current flows and the bulb stops glowing when the magnet stops moving. Let's make a note of our observations. So what we saw is that the current in the coil increases and the lamp glows brighter when a stronger magnet is used, the number of turns of the wire increases, the area of the loop increases, the magnet moves faster towards the coil. Also, we saw that when the magnet stops moving, the current stops and the lamp no longer glows. So how do we make sense of all of this? Let's examine the physics of what's going on in the simulation more closely. At the moment I start moving the magnet towards the coil of wire, at time t equals zero, the magnet is quite far away from the coil. I've drawn the coil without the lamp, for simplicity. The area of the loop or coil is A. There are n turns of wire in the coil. And this white arrow here represents the normal, an imaginary line perpendicular to the area of the loop. Since the magnet is far away from the coil, the magnetic field at the coil is basically non-existent. So the magnetic flux density at the coil is basically zero. This means that the magnetic flux linkage through the coil at the start is easy to work out. Since B is equal to zero, the flux linkage at the start, T equals zero, is just zero as well. Let's say it takes a short time, delta T, for the magnet to be moved close to the coil. Because the magnet is so close to the coil now, there are magnetic field lines poking through the area of the loop. The magnetic field lines are shown in black here. So the magnetic flux density at the coil is no longer zero. To keep things simple, we'll assume that the magnetic flux density through the coil is uniform and parallel to the normal and call it B. We can then work out the magnetic flux linkage through the coil now. Since the field lines are pointing in the same direction as the normal, the angle theta is just zero. And so the flux linkage is just NBA. From this, we can get an expression for the change in magnetic flux linkage as the magnet moves towards the coil. This is just the final flux linkage minus the initial flux linkage, which is just equal to NBA. If we divide by delta T, the time taken for the change, we get an expression for the rate of change of flux linkage. The point of doing all this is that the rate of change of flux linkage happens to be proportional to the induced EMF. This is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction for the type of induction that we're talking about in this video, flux changes in a loop. Faraday's law basically says that a change in magnetic flux linkage over time in a loop or coil will create or induce an EMF. And just as the EMF of a battery leads to a current in a circuit, the induced EMF causes or induces a current in a conducting coil or loop. 
This is precisely what we saw in the simulation. Don't worry about the minus sign in Faraday's law for now. We'll discuss its significance in a follow-up video. Often, the minus sign is actually omitted in Faraday's law. And also, because n, the number of turns of wire, is just a constant, sometimes that's just pulled out to the front like this. And so you'll often see Faraday's law presented like this as well. I've noted here the units of all the quantities involved in Faraday's law. For example, induced EMF has units of volts, just like the EMF of a battery power supply. Let's see how Faraday's law can help us understand the observations we noted from the simulation. For the first four observations, when the magnet is moved close to the coil from far away, we found that the rate of change of flux linkage was NBA divided by delta T. So from Faraday's law, the induced EMF is proportional to NBA over delta T. From this, we see that the induced EMF is proportional to B, the magnetic flux density, which explains why the induced current increased and the lamp glowed brighter when a stronger magnet was used, i.e. when B was increased. Similarly, from this relationship here, we can see that the induced EMF is also proportional to N and A, which explains why increasing the number of turns of wire and the area of the loop had the observed effect of increasing the current and the lamp glowing brighter. What about the next observation? How do we explain that? Well, the induced EMF is inversely proportional to the time for the change, delta T. And if the magnet is moved faster over the same distance, then delta T decreases, leading to an increase in the induced EMF and the induced current. What about the last observation? If the magnet isn't moved, there is no change in the flux linkage through the loop, meaning from Faraday's law that the induced EMF will be zero. This explains why nothing happens when the magnet stops moving. Just to be absolutely clear, the relation we've just used to explain our observations is true only for this simple situation. For a more complicated situation, you would have to use Faraday's law, the general form of Faraday's law. And this can lead to more complicated expressions. So what I'm saying is that NBA over delta T might not be universally applicable to every induction situation. Now, you may have a slightly uncomfortable feeling about all of this. We've discussed Faraday's law of induction, but it doesn't seem to explain why electrons should start moving in the coil when a magnet is pushed towards it. In the first type of induction discussed in previous videos, I explained that it was the magnetic force that was responsible for the induced EMF that develops as a result of moving a wire and cutting across magnetic field lines. In this video, in contrast, the coil of wire was stationary. It was the magnet that was being moved towards the coil. So the electrons in the coil weren't being moved, and so they didn't experience any magnetic forces. Basically, what we discussed here had nothing to do with cutting field lines and the induced EMF was not due to the magnetic force. So what's going on? In the introduction to induction video, I mentioned that James Clerk Maxwell developed a set of four equations now known as Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism. One of them explains the puzzle we've been discussing. It's expressed in terms of advanced maths and is of course not part of the spec, but you can still understand the gist of it. The right hand side of the equation is basically the rate of change of magnetic flux density. And the left hand side expresses something to do with an electric field. In words, the equation basically says a changing magnetic field gives rise to an electric field. In our scenario, pushing the magnet towards the loop changes the magnetic field in the loop, which gives rise to an electric field within the loop. This electric field is circular, as shown, and results in the electrons in the coil experiencing an electrical force. This is what fundamentally causes the induced EMF to develop within the coil and the induced current to flow in the coil. Just want to mention that I'm very grateful to FET for their excellent simulation that I used earlier on in the video. 
I'll leave a link to the simulation in the description and I strongly suggest you check it out. Great way to develop your intuition about induction. If you found this video useful, please like it, share it, subscribe to the Forest Learn channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. Thanks for listening and take care and I hope to see you soon.